Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming for this presentation. Uh, the idea I have here is to uh, express some of the um, uh, achievements and concerns that I have with the subject of documentation and uh, to try to foresee in the future what kind of uh, uh, developments that we can do in terms of documentation for LibreOffice. What I think it's important, it is my personal view, is that uh, we are good at developing software, but uh, we should also be able to transmit the beauty of our software to our customers and to our users. And that, uh, com that includes the documentation of the software. Uh, from the very beginning, it was clear that we were developing software and we, are, we were not documenting the features. And this is not good because, of course, users don't get uh, the information about the feature, features. So that's important for us. And uh, what we have at the moment in terms of documentation, it's a very broad uh, subject and uh, it includes the help, it includes the user guides, it includes the technical doc documentation of the technical aspects of the software and many other aspects, as well as, for example, new medias and new uh, forms of, uh, of uh, uh, media, okay? Uh, so what we have in terms of documentation, the help, which is connected to the product, is something that we deliver when we download it, the guides, which is written by the community, and it's available to increase the user awareness of the, of the features. Uh, the API, which is this focus for development, and uh, also for some advanced users. Uh, the wiki, which is community-driven, and it's free for uh, edition and including uh, whatever kind of topic is, is relevant. Uh, tutorials and others, okay? Well, the help for help, okay? This is a situation that we have. Uh, the help is, is, a, is an application that uh, uh, is written in XML, okay? Uh, XML is complicated, okay? It's not very readable. Uh, it's something that we use. It has some advantage, but also it's... Uh, and not an easy uh, way to edit information, okay? We, uh, the help is online and offline, and also it's a steep entry barrier, okay? So if you have to explain the XML that we use to someone that is just coming, that takes a lot of uh, work and a lot of time to get familiar with the, the help. And uh, also, in order to... Um, see what are the results of the help, you also need to uh, likely have a build of LibreOffice. And also the help also has to address the translations. So everything is already in place in terms of XML, but again, for the user, it's not, the, the editor of the help is not so easy. So what's XML? We, you are used, whoever already read the help uh, in source code, we have that kind of uh, 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 verbose uh, editing. No? You absolutely need to be familiar with the, tar the, the XMLs. Uh, we need to build uh, the, the, the software. It's very easy to make mistakes. It's very easy to break, break the the DTD, okay, so again, this is knowledge that uh, people uh, need to be uh, sort of a developer to really address that, and steep entry barrier, okay. Very often, I get in the chats, in Telegram, uh, shall we keep the XML? Is there anything else that we can use to improve the access of uh, the help? Some requirements of these new tools, okay? Uh, support for the translation in the build, provide ways to support translation tools, such as Weblate, uh, be easy to learn for new volunteers, 
produce online and offline help pages. Okay, so I got a lot of uh, of suggestions. Okay, uh, <clears throat> people always comes with uh, bright ideas. You know, let's do that. And then, of course, when we start to to look at the requirements, that's not so easy. Okay, so for example, first first thing is Markdown. Okay, let's change the XML for Markdown. Right, it's very easy. It's pure text, many, st uh, many standards editors. Uh, pure text editor is enough. Syntax is easy to learn. Uh, build tools exist. However, we have several standards. There is not one Markdown syntax. There are several. It depends on the tools that you use. Okay, and uh, it has to address always the translation. Okay. For example, one of the interesting uh, things is why don't we use Hugo, Hugo uh, which also is a Markdown uh, based uh, uh, text um, uh, uh, editor. Okay, and then we run Hugo, it's very fast, and we get all the pages that we want in, the, in HTML, for example. The other one is why not use pure XML? Okay. The, here again, we have many editors. It's uh, non syntax. It's much more flexible. I mean, flexible, but it's much more uh, um, uh, popular. Uh, we have support for translation, and uh, it's very quite close to the XML that we have, except for some um, some uh, specific features. And also, uh, the, the disadvantage is it can it can be quite verbose. Okay, so that's not uh, the other things that I thought. Uh, people also already said uh, use LibreOffice Writer and then export to HTML. Uh, the point is that uh, the export for HTML uh, is very old. Uh, it's not has not been updated uh, since uh, ages. Uh, there is a sanity check uh, for script <coughs> necessary so that you don't do the mistakes. Uh, the translation framework is not very easy to implement. Uh, and export to X, X HTML is a little bit better, but it needs some manual um, uh, tweak. So what is your choice? You have to tell me. You have to, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, draft a project on what is the best tool that we we need to have for the help, okay? And uh, one thing that's very, very common is that um, I have an idea. Why don't you do that? Okay, that's not going to work. Okay, uh, <laughs> if you have an idea and you want to people to join, then you have to start explaining and developing your idea, and then you get people to join. Okay, that's the way. For example. Lindo Storvald started. Okay, he draft, he made a small idea, and he publicized his idea, and then he got support. Here the same. Okay, don't ask me to implement your idea. That's not going to work. Okay. Well, the second great, uh, big uh, challenge that we have in documentation are the guides. Uh, the guides, uh, what's, what's the problem that we have at the moment? Uh, we have a small uh, team of skilled people, okay? Uh, usually people like myself, Peter Schofield, Gene Weber, in, and uh, a couple of other names that really understand what is uh, not only the content that we have to uh, rights, but also the formatting and uh, the production of a book. Okay, uh, uh, very often I have people that comes to the documentation. Oh, I want to help. I want to be a technical writer. Help me! And then uh, we have to put uh, all the efforts to make the people understand that's not so easy, and uh, it's not just writing a couple of paragraphs, but also to understand what is styles what you have to do and what, what you can't do, it's, and uh, things like that. Um, at the moment, we are quite close to the release. 
So mostly what we do in the guides is the updates and revision. So new features go to the guides. And then this is a, a thing that I already um, asked in the steering committee for engineering, is that please developers, if you implement the new features, please let us know the new feature. Please put an image of what you are doing. I discovered later that we have a lot of very visual features that were just a line in the release notes. So uh, I didn't imagine that we had so many new features in 7.6 that deserves a good documentation. Uh, so be verbose when you explain what you are doing. It's important for us, you know. <laughs> uh, I, ca I have tons of examples and the, the first one is that I discovered by myself that we have the spotlight for s styles. This is a wonderful feature. And uh, if uh, I discovered by, by chance, you know, and I say, oh my God, if you write a book and you use styles, the spotlight of styles is an amazing uh, feature. Okay, uh, the guys you produce, um, PDFs and ODT. Uh, I am a bit, at the moment, a bit skeptic on uh, the effectiveness of publishing PDFs uh, 500 pages PDF for user guides. I think that uh, it is important that we make the, the contents more accessible for the people in the sense that it make it more popular. And uh, we are very good in producing PDFs and ODT, but the people that are used now, the, the Z generation or the Y generation that use only uh, cell phones uh, do they want to download a PDF and read on the phone? That's not going to, to work, okay? So I uh, invested quite a lot in terms of online reading. And uh, I evaluated several tools to uh, make my life easier. At the moment, I use this extension, Writer to XTML extension, and I create uh, this uh, small s uh, web server, uh, we're called uh, the bookshelf. Okay, sorry, this is in Portuguese, but it's the bookshelf. And I have all the guides available for download, not only on PDF, on ODF, uh, but also on, on, on um, HTML. But uh, the point is that to transform uh, uh, 500 pages book into uh, a readable HTML, it requires a lot of sanity checking on the books, okay? So I had to run scripts to check the anchoring of the images, the anchoring of the frames, uh, existence of direct formatting, uh, several issues with lists, uh, and fake, uh, I call that fake list, which is a, um, body text with a bullet and not a st specific style. So that makes quite a lot of work to transform it, but it, it's at the end, it works, okay? So this is the layout of one of the guides. I was able to put the table of contents of the chapter here, uh, some auxiliary information here and the contents uh, there, okay? and. Also, all the books, uh, all the chapters are accessible on the left, sorry, on the right. Okay, so this is the layout I have. Okay, that's not so easy. Why it's not so easy? Because when I export into XTML, then I have to manually uh, introduce JavaScript and CSS to get the layout of the page like that. Okay, so it's not so easy. I will explain some of the details here. This is the way we see a chapter. We have the logo, we have the guide name, the title, the subtitle, the copyright, the table of contents, and the contents of the chapter. This is the way that you leave a, uh, a book, you know. It's a sequence of, of um, contents. 
then you have to shuffle. These are sections, and you have to shuffle that to get the other layouts. So I have to introduce sections, these sections then, so that I can get the sections here. OK, so you may recognize that we have the table of contents on the left, uh, chapter and sub subtitle, guide name, etc. And for the, for the sake of uh, uh, usability, I also introduced a couple of more uh, sections, okay, so that I can have the layouts that I show uh, in the in the. So, what is all this effort? This is at the moment very manual, and uh, I'm uh, just wondering if we can evolve and have what I call the web output, which is I have a document, and uh, can I export this document into a true web? web system, a web um, page, you know, because this is the book page and this is the web page. So it's different, but the content is the same, okay? <laughs> so, uh, question, uh, do we have a page grid? Uh, that is uh, something that could remind me, uh, could remind us about the grid used in HTML5. Okay, the CSS grid, so that we can reposition uh, elements of my content into different uh, uh, real estate positions. Uh, uh, associate or locate the sections in the grid so that I can shuffle everything. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so my question is, can I get an attribute of page grid ID into my section? These, of course, are extensions of the ODF. Uh, this is, uh, okay, and uh, the idea is to have that, okay? Uh, this is a, a page style, and I could have uh, grids to divide my page styles into several others ways, and then I can add, uh, attribute the sections. Uh, how about translation? Okay, translation is done by communities. It's a lot of work. Now, it's a lot of work, everybody knows that, Leo knows that, I know that. Uh, it's, it takes a lot of time to translate. Uh, I would like to have translation assi assistance. Fortunately, we started to use WebLates for guides to make an evaluation of how it's effective or not. But machine translation is something that I would like very much to consider either use an external service or an internal service with a uh, force project named Libre Translate. Well, uh, the API documentation is something I try to, to, to touch. Uh, the, this, um, uh, it's created by developers. It's an automatic, uh, automatic um, uh, export of the code, the IDL uh, thing, but for the end user, and for whoever wants to make a script, this is very, very hard to read. Okay? It's not designed for the end user. If I am an accountant and I want to make a uh, spreadsheet with a specific operation, it's extremely hard to uh, get into the information with the uh, current API. Okay? So we don't have uh, a good idea for completion. Uh, I know that there is a experimental code, but it's not complete. It's very hard to navigate in the right APA page. page. Let me just challenge you to get a specific paragraph into a text document. This is just crazy. Uh, you need to traverse a lot of uh, collections of uh, things. Uh, the notation is not user-friendly, critical lack of code snippets, etc. This is an example of what, what that is create courses by range. You really, really need to be a developer to read that and apply it in your script. Okay. So that's uh, my uh, presentation ends here. I'm open to questions, to uh, suggestions, but suggestions will have to be followed by a bit of work from you. Okay. So <laughs> thank you for your time. And, uh, well, I'm open for questions. Um, I was wondering if uh, you already looked into the version of the guide. 
Yes, uh, the e-book, uh, e-pub, no, e-pub, yeah. Uh, I've, I've, I saw the, the contents is there, but it's very, very badly shaped. And uh, most of the, um, most of the uh, uh, e-pub, you need to have a specific uh, tool for that. You need to have an extension in your browser for e-pub. So I prefer to get it directly in the, the navigator, in the browser, and get to the page immediately. Okay. Uh, yeah. But uh, um, I, I found that the, the export for H HTML, uh, it's, it's good, but it has some glitches, some small things that need to be fixed. Yes. Uh, perhaps we can work together with um, Michael and uh, Samantha. We use the uh, XM, uh, XML export to generate uh, uh, web pages from the ODF yeah. uh, document. Yeah. Yeah. But that, uh, it's uh, especially uh, large as uh, our documentation, and they are working to make it, to make it uh, smooth. So I would, when you see problems, uh, with uh, the export of uh, HTML, uh, you should uh, speak with uh, Michael and Yeah. Uh, when do you export? Can you repeat the question? Um, uh, Regina is, uh, Regina is uh, suggesting me to work with uh, Michael Stahl and Svante uh, for uh, export of HTML. Is, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, I have uh, made some tests with exporting of HTML and um, the, the layout is very faithful. I mean, it's, it's, it renders correctly, okay? But it's a, it's a very, very, very long uh, page and you don't have the, uh, the, the table of contents is exactly where it was in the in the book. It's not shuffled in another position. Okay, and that's that's my specific demand. I I, uh, I have this demand too. When I export to HTML, it would be nice that I could have a dialog where I can add some specific parameters so that uh, it will help me to produce. The automatically the um, the uh, web page, uh, including uh, a link for a JavaScript uh, and a link for a CSS. The CSS is to get the grid, and the JavaScript is to uh, add some other features that I don't have in ODF. Okay, so that's it. Question? No question? You have a question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the challenge. Uh, uh, EPUB has been mentioned. Uh, and uh, I have been working with uh, the Ministry of Defense or an uh, in, in innovation department there who uh, invested in the initial export. And, and you are perfectly right that there are some, uh, some open issues that are not correct in the in, in export, not yet implemented. Um, on the other hand, um, an EPUB has some advantages that it's, it's flexible, it shows on various devices, small and large. Uh, Manipulating your screen and it, it allows crawling. And, and there is an, 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 uh, already an, uh, an expert dialogue. It has some uh, it has some advantages uh, connecting with library and metadata, etc. Um, but still, you may be right. Still, you may be right that the the the, uh, the effort in, in improving uh, EPUB export to the left that is needed for this work is, uh, is, is huge compared to the effort that is needed to get 
the HTML export work nicely and, and the manual tweaks, etc. Um, so, so would you be um, uh, could you be challenged by by making some comparison of, of the the effort for root one and root two? And and it's it's not something that I say well do that. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I, Difficult question. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've I made I made some tests. Yeah. Um, um, I used the extension uh, that was available. Yeah. Um, it, unfortunately, this extension is not very well maintained by the, his uh, author. Uh, so I may consider to come back to HTML and do s the scripts that I use for the extension, I can eventually try to make it work with the uh, export to HTML. Okay, so uh, I'm not close to any specific. Uh, uh, um, as long as I get the, pro the, the, the results I was showing here, uh, what is the tool? I don't care very much in the sense that, uh, um, well, it's, it's, uh, uh, I, I am focusing on the, the results. Okay, so. But uh, <clears throat> when I export, uh, for example, here, uh, let's put the, just the draw guide and I read online. OK, so this is what I have. Uh, and it's, you see, it's quite fast. It's, it's just static HTML, so no servers, no database, no nothing. But uh, uh, as long as I get this kind of layout, or even something that is uh, even more better, but at the moment, this is enough, OK? And um, it can be the export for HTML, or it can be the, uh, the extension. The point is that the current export to HTML, which is 4.0, it's broken. Yeah. Uh, it really needs to be completely updated. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I love the, the I, I love the idea to get an, uh, uh, to get an, uh, a lightweight output of, of, the, of the great content because that is obviously uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Is the uh, uh, math formulas export? Is it working? Mathematics? Yeah. Uh, you can, you can, but uh, then uh, uh, you need to. Um, uh, get math, uh, math. There is a JavaScript uh, library specific for that. Um, Firefox has it internally. It renders all the equations nicely, but Chrome and uh, Edge, I don't think they have. So you need the JavaScript. And uh, uh, well, I consider the results quite good, okay. at least on, on Firefox. So we have uh, we have exported the uh, uh, part uh, a form a formula part from ODF uh, to uh, XHTML, uh, uh, including the formula uh, with this um, JavaScript edition, and it's uh, rendered correctly. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. Yeah. Any question? Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good ideas need to follow at least with a proof of code.